Hey everybody, Steve here in the Illinois store. We haven't done a little bit of a walkthrough in a while, so we want to take you through and not show you the things you've seen before, but show you some of the fun stuff we're doing since the last time you saw the shop. So, here we go. Let the camera precede me here. All right. Up front here, it's always worth mentioning again, we have the Craviato kits here. Kit number one, first production kit off the line. New old stock, it's never been played. That's a, that's a special one. The kit on the left is the Bird's Eye Maple Bob Kit from 2010. I've got the matching snare in my office. And then the, uh, the Cherry Kit over here is a special one I had Johnny make for me many, many years ago. And uh, we just recently had that matching snare drum made from a, uh, an old cherry shell that I had around here. So that's uh, some of my favorites. But let's uh, wander over, over this way. You can see this background here in this table. We've been using this to do photographs of drums that I have from Johnny's collection. And these drums are drums that <clears throat> Johnny had put aside many years ago. Some of them are drums that are old vintage drums that inspired him. Some of them are the beginnings of his restoration and customization work that he did for many years in Santa Cruz. Uh, some are early prototypes of things that came to be later, like D.W. Craviato. Also prototypes of certain drums in certain sizes, the first ones that he ever did, things along those lines. And then, of course, some of his production under the Craviato name and the like. So we're doing all of that. These particular drums that uh, he had, he had stored aside. And those are, uh, we're selling those for uh, the family. So the net proceeds from all of these particular items are going to Johnny's family. And uh, some of those are up, we've got some of those up on our reverb store already. Uh, there are, every one of these boxes you see has one of those drums in it. That, that Gretsch up there is, didn't have a box, but that's an early uh, uh, restoration job that Johnny, Johnny did on a beautiful, beautiful bird's eye maple Gretsch shell. Uh, that was uh, wrapped because back in those days wrapped uh, shells were bird's eye. Bird's eye was considered to be uh, defective wood so if they had bird's eye they would always wrap it with a pearl wrap. Uh, today of course bird's eye is highly desirable and we we take it any time uh, we could. But so these all these drums in the boxes are from Johnny and the marks on the boxes are what he had made note of. Uh, for example you can just take a look uh, uh, you know, right here there's one that says number one DW prototype 5x14 maple 1993. That's pretty incredible. Uh, so we've got all sorts of things like that and of course in here the drums that you see on the racks and on the shelves are from my personal collection. Those are not for sale but uh, uh, many of these include uh, very very special drums. A solid from the Craviato solid era. There are two of them there. The red stain and the uh, oak. And there are uh, Craviato first edition of the brass uh, Craviato AK drums, uh, many other special items, timeless timber uh, over on the uh, back wall, and some, several timeless timber, and one 2750 year old sequoia wood drum of which only two exist that Johnny built, and uh, various and sundry other little uh, interesting pieces here and there. Um, on this shelf with Dynasonics that you see right here, uh, these Dynasonics are drums that I worked on. I did the R&D work with Rogers, the new Rogers. I did a lot of the R&D work on Dynas. And what we have here is this drum uh, to the left is the final approved prototype. Uh, the one next to it was almost there, but not quite. And then the next two drums are the first two serial numbers off the line. And if you notice, when we did the prototypes, the way this setup is, is the tone control strainer and vent hole, which is how they were in the original drums. And then in the production models, you have the tone control, the strainer, a separate pattern, and then the vent holes. But this is the first drum off the line, drum number D1001, and this is D1002. And there are a few interesting pieces back here, some of which uh, this is a four, uh, 3 by 14 Craviato from the solid era. This was uh, Joe Morello's drum, a very interesting piece. Nice, uh, great sounding DW drum. These two drums belong to Art Blakey. They need some restoration. Uh, this is just an incredible uh, Superphonic 400 that belonged to Harold Jones. It's part of my collection. And various and sundry other things here. Some special pedals, an incredible 
26-inch Zildjian symbol in that case from the 50s, and that symbol is just beyond belief. I'll do a sound file for you somewhere down the line. Trans stamp too, right? It's a trans stamp, yes. So, let's move on. Let's go over to the, we'll skip over here to the studio. Uh, stuff in the studio, uh, this studio, our recording studio is still our recording studio, of course, but uh, there's a bunch of symbols over here uh, that include a lot of symbols that came from my personal stash of symbols that uh, I had shipped over to me. Some of them were in New York, so I had the guys ship those to me here so that I could put them all together. And we're doing, uh, Steve Jr. is doing sound files on all of those, so a bunch of those will be going up on the Reverb site soon. Uh, you'll be able to get some of those. There's some great stuff in there that I had just, I just pulled them out because I thought they were particularly nice and I wanted to say, save them and now you might as well have them. I can only play so many cymbals, right? Uh, back here we've got some more drums that are ready to go up on the website and the like. Uh, you know, here's one of our photo rooms. And we've got Noah in there taking pictures now of a really nice 12-14-20 Ludwig kit from the uh, 60s. And here's more of the stuff we've got. Most of these you'll see up on uh, our reverb store where we do all our commerce these days. Hey Noah. Yeah. How you doing, man? Hey, I was taking pictures. <laughs> of that, um, my my wife and my daughter are in my office, by the way. That's what that is. You can, uh, can hear her in there. Ugly <laughs> kid there. That's a nice kid. It had a double tom mount on it at one point in time, but those holes got plugged and the rails back on there. Be a nice player yeah, for somebody. Joe Marquardt did a really, really fantastic job. It's, I mean, Joe always does seamless. a great job. For yeah. Here in the Illinois area, Joe Marquardt, I've known Joe for a million years. Uh, his business is Hit Drum, H I T D R U M dot com. And Joe does tremendous work, and you ought to go see him if you need anything done here in the area. <laughs> here we have all manner of craziness here. Uh, a little bit of a museum. Uh, my Fibes Museum is part of what's in here, which includes uh, several, several Fibes kits. Uh, this beautiful top hat and cane kit here that will be going to a new owner very shortly. I have Jack DeJanet's sonar kit back there, which I'll eventually get set up with all the stands and hardware because we have all of that. The discography on that kit is about two pages long. It's incredible. Uh, beautiful sonar kit, uh, a ton of five stuff. And Slingerland, this is my personal uh, chrome over wood kit and my personal copper kit over there. And I don't play with three bass drums. It just looks cool to put them all up there. The 20, the 22, and the 24. Uh, so these are great. There's a video, I did a video of this kit and the story behind why I wanted to get that back. Uh, more fives, more cool things. This is a fives marble kit. This is the double forte kit. Two 13s, two 14s, a 16, two 24s. That's how it was cataloged. Oh, here we've got two 16s and 18. We also got a 22. We got everything. Uh, before, we've shown you that one before, but that's Harold Jones' Ludwig kit that he used uh, for the first integrated band that ever played in the White House during the Kennedy era. Uh, the Paul Winter uh, Sextet played in the White House for a jazz series sponsored by Jackie Kennedy and that's the kit that uh, Harold used. That kit is going to go to the American Black History Museum and be uh, donated in Harold's name. Harold is, uh, is really happy that we're doing that for him. And of course we have more. Uh, another Fives kit here. Really beautiful downbeat. Sky Blue Pearl 12-14-20 matching 4x14. Crazy clean kit. A super super rarity here. Purple Diamond Pearl, and that's the real deal. It uh, was a finish that was not cataloged ever by Rogers, but it did exist and it is real. That kit that's a 13, 16, 20 with a matching snare is literally almost new old stock. And it has all the cocktail kit conversion items with it. This is another separate kit that is the actual cataloged cocktail kit, which was the 12-inch uh, tom, <clears throat> the snare drum, and the 16-inch floor tom with all the accessories, including the reversible pedal, to play it from underneath. <clears throat> so crazy stuff, just crazy stuff. And then we've also got <clears throat> Ludwig, our classic maple series that we do with Ludwig in rosemarine pearl, which is a replica of a Ludwig finish that was done in the 30s. And we love it, and we, we, we move a lot of these kits. There were three full sets, but one sold the other day. So this one's a 12, 14, 20 with a five by 14. That's a 13, 16, 22. You can have a five by 14 with it if you want. So let's Don't see. Your, uh, oh yeah, my Craviato kit number two. Look at that two. beautiful 
We showed you kit Eight. number one. Aged maple. <laughs> yeah, we showed you kit number one out there. And this was kit number two that was specifically made for me. Uh, and it's a 12, 14, 18 matching snare. And it's up there on the shelf for safekeeping. But that kit uh, came to me and uh, was made in 2006. So that's been around for a while. I love that one. Let's, uh, let's go take a quick visit to the uh, museum room. All right, let me just get a couple. Get that picture of Johnny up there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great picture. And then up here we got, in the comments, see if you can name all these people. <laughs> Sometimes, but most people can get at least like, you know. You can get a couple. Four out of five. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, now I'll tell you who they are. So you got Roy Haynes on the, the left, far left over there. And of course you got uh, Armand Zildjian next to him. And right in the center you got Elvin. And right next to Elvin, you got Louis Belson, and on the right, you got Max Roach. That's uh, that's some serious talent, all in one picture there. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> we can look at the snares here a little bit. Maybe we got a lot of a lot bunch of cool of snares. stuff. A bunch of different varieties of snares. We got a lot of these wonderful Ludwig 402 snares. Uh, LM402. This is the six and a half by fourteen uh, alloy shell Superphonic 400, the John Bonham drum, if you will. And these drums are great. You can see them up on our Reverb store. It's a great, great value. And what's uh, uh, most of these are all up with sound files. If you can always call us here if you have any questions about any of these. And then uh, don't forget symbols. Uh, Istanbul. We got a really good. Uh, yeah, well, new nice ship selection in. of Istanbul. And we've got a good selection of uh, Vulcan symbols from Italy. And a lot of people have been asking for sound files. We're getting them up one at a time as quick as we can. Yes, we're just trying to there, work through. There were some, yeah, there were some technical issues there, but yeah, we're working through everything as fast as we can. <laughs> now you can see some Vul Vulcan, kind of cool. Yep. That we'll be doing eventually. Yep. And. Uh, <clears throat> We just do kind of a quick one in here in the in the museum room because you've seen this before. This is where we do the podcast. So we do our podcast bro uh, broadcast in here, and um, you know, same as we've had in the past. Of course, I've got on the left uh, the bop kit that belonged to Art Blakey back there. That's my personal collection. A very very cool Gretsch kit that is uh, in the spirit of the way Louis Belson had his Gretsch set in the early fifties. He had two 20 by 20 bass drums. He had a cocktail drum, which you see there as a floor tom, between the two bass drums, and he had two very small shallow toms left and right of that. Someone ordered this kit with a nine by 13, that cocktail drum size 24 deep by 16, as a floor tom, 20 by 20 for the bass drum. And that's a cool, uh, really cool kit. Belongs to a good, good friend of mine. Uh, and then uh, on the right hand side, you got the Cadillac Green, which is the uh, Birdland kit, not the exact kit that was in Birdland, but the kit that was in Birdland was those sizes, 13, 16, 22, with a matching snare, and it was a Cadillac Green Nitron with 24 karat gold hardware, just like that. And of course, my Rogers, my Pride and Joy Rogers kit here, literally new old stock, uh, used by a customer for about six months, uh, bought new in the late 60s, or early, I think it was 1970 when he bought it, you paid $980 for everything you see there, which is uh, two 8x12s, uh, 114, two 18 inch bass drums built specifically out as a double bass kit because you can see the bracket to hold the uh, hi hat closer. That, that's really cool. Yeah, and a 5x14. Give a close up matching, on that. <laughs> matching wood dyna as well. So uh, that's just an incredible rarity. I haven't done a sound file with that yet, but I will. It also came with all the complete pedals and stands. Uh, that he bought it with. So it's just one of those once in a lifetime things that comes along. You have to get those. And then of course up here we've got uh, some other vintage kits, a very cool Premier kit. Uh, in bits and pieces we've got the uh, Yamaha kit that was used at the Jazz Showcase. We've moved things around a little bit, but that kit uh, is one of the toms in the 18-inch base, two floors, the 10-inch tom in the snare. Uh, this was used by Roy Haynes and many, many others at the Jazz Showcase here in Chicago. We've got a beautiful Trixon kit in great shape here. 
from the 60s. My personal Rogers kit, 13, two 16s, 22, matching wood die and a canister thrown and all the stands and pedals. We've got to do a video with that kit pretty soon. I miss playing it. And we've also got, uh, I did a video, you guys can see this on YouTube, but I did a video of this, uh, what I call Lifesaver Vista Light Kit. Uh, just check out YouTube and, and you, our YouTube channel. You can find it up there. That's a pretty cool piece. And back here, I'm a big Fives fan, and I've got more of my Fives collection back here, including the what we call shower door finish. And then we've got, uh, we've got a, like a, a suede. This is kind of like a suede finish. And then, of course, we've got the copper over wood, and we've got the smoke acrylic over there. And we've also got some chrome over wood we haven't set up yet. And the beautiful new Rogers Covington series kits. And I've got this up on uh, my Reverb store. And uh, we did this one specially with original Rogers Tom Holder, Rogers Bracket, and uh, my reproduction cymbal Elon, which is exactly like the original. These are great drums, and that's got a cool look to it. Make it really vintage. And back here, we still got a bunch of our overstock, uh, which would be additional Gretsch kits, a lot of nice broadcaster kits. Um, I'm sorry, Brooklyn kits. The broadcaster kits are elsewhere. <clears throat> Brooklyn and Cream Oyster, Brooklyn and Satin Maple, uh, several other things, one-offs here and there. Packing and shipping, which is crazy over there. And uh, back here, we've got uh, our symbol lathing operation, which you've probably seen before on videos and the like. And just now, we have gotten in some, uh, we, we usually do the symbol lathing. Steve Jr. and Noah do this work, and they basically take old symbols and relay them and rehammer them. But right now, we're also starting to look at uh, doing some of our own from blanks. So we've got some blanks, what I call cupped and edged blanks, like that. So uh, we're going to start doing some from scratch with those blanks. And we will uh, we'll see what happens. Be careful, yeah. They're, know, they're sharp on the edge. Yeah. Well, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to play around too much with this stuff. They're inverted right now. Yeah. There's a 20, a couple of 22s, and you got a 24 back there. So They've that'll been, be fun. Been hammered a little bit, but yeah, check out. We'll, we'll film some of that. Yeah, so that's kind of where things are at right now. Uh, at the shop here in uh, Illinois, we're not open other than on Saturdays from 11 till 5. And uh, any of the other times we're, we're closed. If somebody's in town, if you do want to come by and call us for an appointment, that's fine. And we can see what we can do to accommodate that. So otherwise, Saturdays from 11 to 5. And uh, if you got any questions, you can reach us, maxwelldrums.com, or all our contact information is right there on the first page of the website. Yeah, I'll put my email in the description. Yeah. So. And of course, our reverb store is. I'm, uh, I'm Steve Jr. Yeah. Steve Maxwell <laughs> the Drums. Cameraman. <laughs> yeah. If you just type in looking for shops on reverb, Steve Maxwell Drums, and it'll bring you up to our Illinois store and our New York store. You can check things out. Thanks.